This is Dimitri Lascaris reporting for The Real News from Montreal, Canada. Former Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper was one of Israel's staunchest supporters on the international stage. Harper's 10-year reign ended in 2015, but not before his unqualified support for the State of Israel provoked a civil rights controversy in the city of Montreal, Canada's second largest city. During Canada's 2015 federal election campaign, Montreal-based supporters for the Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions, or BDS movement, joined forces with local candidates of the Communist Party of Canada to draw attention to Stephen Harper's indifference to the plight of Palestinians. The tactic these activists and candidates employed to highlight Harper's attitude toward Palestinians was to erect large posters in certain parts of the city whose central and devastating image was that of a dead Palestinian boy. Emblazoned above the image of the dead child were the words, Israel assassinates Palestinian children, Harper applauds. What did the other party say? The dead child featured in these posters was one of four Palestinian boys who were killed in the summer of 2014 by an Israeli missile attack. At the time of the attack, they were playing soccer on a Gaza beach. The four boys, for the record, were Mohammed Ramiz Bakr, 11, Ahed Atef Bakr, and Zakaria Ahed Bakr, both 10, and Ismail Mahmoud Bakr, nine years old. Three of these boys were killed as they sought to flee the beach after the first child was killed. The attack was witnessed by foreign journalists and was widely reported in the international media. One of the witnesses was a reporter from The Guardian. In July 2015, approximately one year after the attack and just before Canada's last federal election, The Guardian reported that Israel's military had exonerated itself in the attack. The Israeli military claimed to have conducted a, quote, extensive criminal investigation, close quote. According to The Guardian, however, the Israeli military never attempted to obtain any statement from The Guardian reporter who witnessed the killings. Months after the Israeli military exonerated itself and during Canada's 2015 federal election in the latter part of the year, BDS activists and Communist Party candidates began erecting these posters in certain parts of the city of Montreal. Within days, they received reports that Montreal city employees were removing and confiscating the posters. At the time, the mayor of Montreal was Denis Coderre. During his time as Montreal's mayor, Coderre led a trade mission to Israel, and his support for the state of Israel was so strong that B'nai B'rith Canada, a pro-Israel lobby group, described Coderre as, quote, the toast of the Jewish community and the apple of the Jewish community's eye. Of course, the many members of Canada's Jewish community who are critical of Israel's human rights records might dispute that claim. The removal of the posters by city employees was captured on video by BDS activists. Let's have a look at that video. Hey, you know it's legal by Election Canada. Why did you remove that? Commande de color. Did you remove that? Why? It's enregistered with Election Canada. Ben oui, c'est enregistré. Appelez Élections Canada. C'est considéré comme étant... Euh, comme du vandalisme. Wow! Ouais, hey, c'est hey, la réalité, là. Wow! Hey, hey, wow! Hey, 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 c'est hey. quoi, là? Wow! Bravo, Kader! Hey, bravo! Hey, 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 hey. Ça va être pas honte, qu'est-ce que les enfants palestiniens et palestiniennes qui se font euh, garrocher les bombes par le gouvernement Harper? On September 28, 2015, Montreal lawyer John Philippot wrote a demand letter to the city of Montreal on behalf of BDS Quebec. His letter, a copy of which has been obtained by The Real News, stated, The city of Montreal, through its employees, has illegally removed a large number of their electoral posters. The city is preventing BDS from participating in the elections and is abusing their rights of democratic expression. We seek your assurance that this illegal practice ceases immediately. My client reserves its right to pecuniary damages in the amount of approximately $20,000. On the following day, September 29, 2015, Don Domenico Zambito, a lawyer for the city of Montreal, responded to John Philpott's complaint. Zambito's letter, a copy of which has also been obtained by The Real News, stated, We would like to inform you that the posters were unfortunately removed by error and that from now on they may be put in place. On that same day, September 29, 2015, Bruce Katz, the official agent of BDS Quebec, filed a complaint with Elections Canada over the illegal removal of the posters by the city of Montreal. Despite Mr. Zambito's letter of apology and despite the complaint of BDS Quebec filed with Elections Canada, the city of Montreal continued to remove the electoral posters. Moreover, the city has never compensated BDS Quebec or the Communist Party of Canada for the confiscation of their posters, which cost thousands of dollars to produce. As a result, 
In June 2016, BDS Quebec, the Communist Party of Canada, and 13 BDS activists and Communist Party candidates commenced a lawsuit in Quebec Superior Court. That lawsuit was against the city of Montreal. In the suit, the plaintiffs seek a total of approximately $250,000 in damages. The lawsuit went to trial last month in January 2018, and I had the opportunity to attend the first day of the trial and to interview two of the plaintiffs outside of the courtroom. The two plaintiffs with whom I spoke were Bruce Katz, the official agent of BDS Quebec, and Bill Sloan, a Communist Party candidate in a Montreal area riding in Canada's 2015 federal election. Let's listen to some of what Bruce Katz and Bill Sloan had to say. What we've heard today in the courtroom is testimony involving uh, the removal of certain posters, apparently by uh, employees of the city of Montreal. Why don't you give us a little bit of background about these posters? How did they come to be posted during the electoral campaign, okay. and who posted them? Uh, as uh, um, as part of the BDS Quebec, which, which was a committee that was uh, created by the Coalition for Justice and Peace in Palestine several years ago, um, we consulted the uh, Electoral Law of Canada, and uh, we uh, found that it is possible for a third party, uh, unincorporated, uh, to uh, participate in a federal election uh, as long as it meets the, the stipulations of uh, the uh, federal electoral law as uh, also enforced by Elections Canada. Uh, this we did. I function as the official agent for uh, the, the, the coalition. Uh, I've, as the official uh, agent for uh, BDS Quebec as a committee of the uh, of the uh, CJPP, mm -hmm. and um, we all sat down together and we decided uh, that we would use the the image of uh, of a, a child killed on a beach in Gaza in 2014 by Israeli shelling. As a matter of fact, there were four children, but there's the image of one child who was uh, killed on the beach. And uh, in our discussion, we said, well, it's, some people may find it provocative, but it happens to be the truth. And uh, we have to put that out that, put it, put it out there, uh, one, to uh, inform the public of what is really happening on the ground and what is not being covered in the media. And, and secondly, to challenge uh, political parties and, and, uh, and politicians in an, in a, an election period uh, to to state exactly what their position is uh, on the, on the Palestinian question and on Israeli abuses of uh, of the Palestinian people, in particular of Palestinian uh, uh, Palestinian uh, uh, children, uh, we uh, uh, first of all based the the, the, the choices on uh, verifiable, documented evidence of Israeli abuses of Palestinian children. So everything that uh, appears there uh, is based on documented fact. There is nothing that is unverifiable mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And we know for a fact, we, we know this for a fact, that there was a, uh, a standing order issued by the city of Montreal mm -hmm. to take down our sign. And how do you know that? We we know it as a... As a, a, a the, the result of uh, our lawyer's uh, discovery interrogation mm -hmm. that we, dis we, we, were, we found out that there was a standing order. And, and do you know or have you been able to ascertain who issued that standing order within the city administration? No. All we know is that uh, a, a, a lady who was uh, replacing uh, an, another gentleman who had just gone on, on sick leave uh, mm -hmm. while, while under questioning admitted that when she got to her post, there was already a standing order mm -hmm. to take uh, all of our uh, posters down. The thing is, uh, what we want to know, what we'd like to know is who issued the order mm -hmm. and how high did it go. I uh, filed an official complaint with uh, Elections Canada and I kept up a, a uh, frequent communication with uh, uh, a gentleman, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Touin, who at that point was in the uh, the, the uh, bureau de direction of Elections Canada, um, and uh, I do believe that uh, that is what resulted in uh, uh, Election Canada's uh, uh, official denunciation of the Montreal City of Montreal's practice of having taken down our our posters. 
but um, there was no sanctions behind that. It's simply a slap on the wrist. Now, Bill, uh, between the time that all of this occurred and the current time, the commencement of this trial, uh, there was a change in the administration of the city of Montreal. Uh, Mayor, yes, and the, the Mayor Valérie Laplante uh, uh, succeeded to uh, the mayoralty after Denis Coderre, who uh, I think it's fair to say uh, during his tenure was uh, not shy about expressing support for the state of Israel. Have you noticed, you know, Valérie Laplante, I think, is widely perceived to be significantly more progressive than Denis Coderre. Have you noticed any change in the way the city is litigating this case uh, since the change in the administration? No. And why do you think that is? Well, I'd be guessing, but uh, it would seem to me that um, the, uh, uh, the Zionist lobby will be landing on anybody's head with all four feet uh, if any money is voluntarily, quote unquote, given to the BDS coalition or to monsters like the Communist Party. Uh, so uh, I suspect that their, their position is, well, let's let the courts make the decision and then nobody will say that we did it. It's the courts that did it and they sort of keep their hands, uh, you know, clean sort of, yeah. So ultimately, what is it that the Communist Party of Canada and the candidates who are parties to this litigation <laughs> seeking from uh, the city of Montreal? Money. And, and how much are they seeking? A lot of money. I mean, they, look, the, 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 I started this back in 2008. I, I ran a campaign back then where we had two posters. One said, uh, end Canadian support for apartheid Israel, and the other one said, Canada out of Afghanistan. Nothing about voting for me, no picture of me anywhere. And they all got torn down. And the ones that I had put in Westmount around the Israeli consulate were torn down within an hour or two of my putting them up on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I understand the city of Westmount has taken a different approach to uh, litigating the claims that you might have had arising from that. It's not that they, so much that they took a different approach. I mean, they had admitted to taking them down because the, uh, their private security people because um, they have a private security as well as the police. <coughs> so the private security had taken, had gotten the, the blue collar workers to take them down. And then they took uh, examples of the posters to make a, a, a police report. And so we had done something illegal, I suppose, and made a report and noted. And it got into a, a local newspaper and I found out about it actually through Abby Lippman, who just passed away uh, the day after Christmas. She had noticed it and brought it to my attention. So we had them cold, that they had taken them down uh, on the same day they were put up. Mm -hmm. So they made an offer, and we settled. Mm -hmm. Are you at liberty to say for how much? Yeah, 10000 The trial of this action concluded on January 24, 2018. The judge has reserved her decision. In the interim, The Real News reached out to the new administration of Ma Mayor Valérie Laplante for an explanation as to why the city of Montreal continues to expend taxpayer money to defend a case which seems indefensible. The answer we got back from the city of Montreal was as follows. This case is currently the subject of a court trial. The lawyers of the city of Montreal would put forward several defenses before the judge who's assigned to the file. In order to respect the ongoing legal process, we decline your interview request. This is Dimitri Lascaris reporting for The Real News from Montreal, Quebec. Mm -hmm.